that's where I that's where I really find and, and hold a lot of hope for for this and this movement. Some of the best growers, I can tell you right now, hands down, some of the best growers are tent growers. It is a long fight. It is a hard fight. And sometimes it doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere. We got a great one for you today, guys. I'm speaking with Brendan of In-House Genetics. We are talking about legalization, decriminalization, and education. Eh, we talk about some strains, a little bit of the old days, definitely I hear the word beasters in there somewhere, but we both are huge advocates for home growers and home grower rights. We know this plant has, you know, many benefits and for some people, bigger benefits than others. So we firmly believe everybody should have the right to grow. We spend a lot of the conversation talking about being educated, knowing your rights, and knowing some of the propaganda that has worked against us in society up until this point. So educate yourself, fight for your right, and like we both said, it's really the home advocates and the home grower advocates that are going to push this plant into the future in a sustainable and healthy way, which is what we all want to see. You guys don't want to see me talking. You want to see Brandon from in-house genetics. So let's get into the interview. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll keep going with this, um, and and then I'll actually start the show proper. But I'm I'm enjoying our conversation as it is right now. But it's funny the beasters. I always say I never had to smoke brick weed because there was always I mean like beasters was the worst of my cannabis because I was I was you know a teen in the Pacific Northwest all the way through my twenties, etc. So we always had good stuff out here, and that I would say I would say you sold the beasters in order to afford the local. <laughs> right. yeah yeah and then, right. then eventually started growing well because uh back in the day it was like there was two and you know they were basically double the price so you had the you had this canadian stuff the beasters coming in and then you had local so the people like the local growers and uh, if you got if you're able to get in on with some of the some of the local growers it was it was money but also too you were paying you're paying 3200 to 4200 a pound and that was probably what 2004 2005 and then the those beasters would come in at what 2100 2400 all day smoking beasters god this had to have been probably late 90s yeah late, yeah basically uh maybe yeah i guess it was even before that because i know it slowed down tremendously right after 9 11 because they put a clamp on the on the border so yeah you're right probably from 95 to to 2002 it was really heavy and then uh, a lot of those folks um a lot of those folks that were growing up along the border you know because we i knew quite a bit of them or quite quite a few of them they just moved down here but they moved into like the nice part of neighborhoods like off of there up there in capitol hill off of 20 22nd avenue you know yeah. they're blowing houses out through there and you know uh, at the time those houses were like a million bucks two million bucks you know they're probably five million now but uh, seven thousand yeah. square foot house, and just you know lights in every single room and all through the whole place. And but also too, you you know you're producing you're producing a pound at roughly what 400, 450 a pound, but you're you're wholesaling that you're wholesaling that at you know at, at you know what twenty five hundred, twenty eight hundred, you know. I remember certain neighborhoods on the east side, the Bellevue, kind of the crossroads area in particular, that just kind of got taken over by groups of nationalities and, and that the whole neighborhood would just almost be grow houses. You'd have that one like actual couple that lived in the neighborhood and always wondered why, you know, all the windows were always closed. But <laughs> yeah. The well, I would say it was more also too, though, you like for a minute there, you could throw a rock and hit a grow house here in the northwest i mean that's how because remember uh when it, i don't know like I, I guess there was like a place called eco enterprises and then there was one down in fremont and there was really the only grow shops at the particular at that time so this is like oh, yeah. right as like 99 2000 2001 and um you always had to be wary like you're always looking around to see if you know if there was a car that was in the you know they didn't look right because you know they were what they were doing is they were taking uh license plate numbers and then they would follow people from the grocery store and that's how they were obtaining stuff but yeah i remember 
just being hella nervous, not talking to anybody. You're just getting in and getting out. And then, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I'm glad I lived those days. I don't miss them, but also too, I, it, you learned a lot and, and taught you how to be, how to be stealthy, you know, because now everybody's just like, you know, it's out on open street. You still get a little weary because you still have that, still have that kind of, that, 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 you know, reserve type of feel to you, you know, cause, yeah. uh, cause you know, you, it's just the way that you were, you know, you taught yourself or you learned along the way, you know? It's kind and of they, survival they, methods, really. Hundred percent. Yeah. The uh but that's where um I think that's like when you when you start talking to people that have been in and around it or you know, uh worked with this plant for you know, decade decade or more, in some cases like this, you know, especially when you start getting into people that have been, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, you know, working with this plant, some of the stories and you know, some of the stuff that, that went down and happened and, and it sucks because it, it, we went through all that trauma and, and more trauma for others over a lie at the end of the day. It's, it was, it was propaganda's lie. Um, they used it, they used, you know, it was a political ploy, uh, all that. And what it did is it created a big divide amongst a lot of situations and people, especially it turned the police against the people, you know, because anybody that, that was a grower understood cannabis knew that it was, it was a farce for it to be a scheduled one. You know, there's no, yeah. you know, there's no, but yeah, it, that's the frustrating part about it is, is a lot of people are starting to wake up, but also it's, it's going kind of by the wayside where people are like, man, eh, well, it, what happened has happened instead of being outraged and pissed, you know, I mean, you, you know, that's the, you know, it's like anything. If you're not, if you're not mad, you're not paying attention. Well, when you when you've been beat down so long to finally get permission or approval, you're like, thank you, thank you. When it should be complete the opposite, it should be like, damn you for keeping us down, you know, this long and repeating the real rhetoric that they kind of did. To where I was having this conversation the other day uh, with a person. We were talking about skateboarding, and I've skateboarded my whole life, still do. I used to get chased by cops. It is now an Olympic sport. That's mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of cannabis. It's kind of like you used to go to jail. Now you can build generational wealth if you're the right. right person. Now you now you got the same people kicking in doors owning some of these licenses, right? You know, yeah. they're arresting people and you know, yeah. it's like I think what it is, but to your point though, it's like take we just recently had the State of the Union, right? Mm -hmm. Um and what the whole discussion was was he didn't mess up his, you know, he didn't mess up his words. He was somewhat clear, this and that. But what it is is the bar is set so low that anything right. above that seems like a win. But in reality, it's like, no, the bar should be raised to the highest level and it should be scrutiny and, and all that, not the headline being like, oh, we you know, didn't mess up in his words. And I just use that as an example. I think that the bar in many cases is set so low or it's like Stockholm syndrome, like where you yeah. start uh, uh, sympathizing with your with your abuser. And yeah. that's what uh, a lot of this community uh has the remnants of because the it's like oh we'll give you this little piece but you know we're only going to give you just enough that you'll still think that you're winning or you know in reality uh this should have been decriminalized uh you know decades ago but even just in the in the past just five years right should be decriminalized nobody should be in jail on a cannabis charge and that's just plain and simple and then and in turn then you have you know, they use it as a political tool where they're like, oh, elect me, we'll get this going. And, you know, that's a that's the thing is, is um, we talk, of, you know, quite a bit about, you know, just the community politics and all that, because this is all intertwined. And truly, at the end of the day, any administration, no matter who the president is, could actually do an executive order to decriminalize cannabis, because yeah. technically, maybe. If you get into the weeds of it, excuse the pun, but it might be illegal. But what would it force do? What would force it be the lawmakers would have to put their signature in order for it to go to the Supreme Court to deem it an illegal move. That means that all those signatures, you would know they're against cannabis, right? And right. they're against they're against the will of the people. And that's where I think this community is unique because I've I've had people uh, say that it's a crazy idea, but I really think you could actually have a political action committee based off of cannabis, right? And that's your main focus. I mean, should I say special interest group 
of yeah. it, you know, um, rather. And yes, we have, what's that? The lobbyists. I think you could, well, this is what you're having is you're having these cannabis lobbies form, but they're in the interest of monopolizing mm -hmm. and to further the, the MSO. So there's not, there's not a lobbying firm that's looking out for the interests of you, me, or anybody else that has been affected by this. Now, what they do is they throw these carrots and they talk these equities and they talk all this. And it's like, there's no, that that's just, that's just a, a, a headline, right? They know only people read headlines. So when you yeah. see this, like, oh, we're going to give these license to, to people that were affected by cannabis, but it's like, you're going to give them the license and then they have to go to the same people that you're trying to compete with in a sense to get money, right? Because you can't go to the bank and get this, right? You can't, you can't get a loan or a traditional business loan, like any other business or anything like that. So what it does is, so I feel like without having the financial backing to do those equity types of situations uh, or a fund, like you could, the state could easily fund the cannabis industry in itself, right? Where they could actually loan the proper amount to a company, you know, instead of like a traditional way. And they, cause they're collecting billions in taxes, right? And here in Washington, we have no idea where that money's going. It's just going into, the general fund, which is a slush fund for, for everything else. But, but, but my ultimate point is, is, is that the, and we have to kind of look at this collectively and then we're always going to have differences. We're always going to have, you know, uh, this, but we need to agree on a handful of things. And I've said it before, let's agree on five things and let's disagree on everything else, but at least let's agree on five things and let's fight for that moving forward. And then that way you can take, that momentum and take that um, attitude and take that uh, basically energy and put it into stuff so we can get decriminalization, right? Um, I think decriminalization should come way before legalization. Uh, and also too, it's the mockery and the joke of the, that they're coming out with the one and push it to a schedule three. Schedule three does no good for anybody. What it does is it it's another safeguard to keep control because there's a one thing that I can tell you when it comes to industry and when it comes to corporate capture, that's pretty much our, our, our government in a nutshell. Now, and if you decriminalize cannabis, that means that the, the, the indu prison industrial complex is going to lose a ton of money, mm -hmm. right? You legalize and people start sharing the information of, of the healing aspects of cannabis, pharmaceutical uh, companies is going to take a big, huge hit. And then once you realize that you can build just and build and make just about anything, out of hemp and cannabis, right? Then now all of a sudden that's gonna, it's a timber, that's the paper, that's the plastic, all that stuff. And they don't know, they don't have a way to control it as a plant because one, you can't patent it, right? Technically you can't, but even though they, there is patents, but that's what I'm getting at is, is, is you know, we're being, we're, we're continue being played and it's just like, but we'll dangle, they'll dangle this carrot and we think that it's progress. Like when Biden came out, said, I'm gonna do these pardons for these you know uh federal convictions i saw the whole social media light up oh this is progress this is a win and it's like no what it is is it gives them the headline when it comes elections and they're starting you're starting to see it now we legalized cannabis or we you know we uh exonerated or you know none of the, nobody got out of jail right there nobody nobody necessarily like i think it was like five thousand people or something that probably live their fine their their life normal right like one guy i saw on twitter he got his charge because he was at a rally and he was smoking weed on the government property and so that's where he got uh, uh that's where he got that's where he got uh jammed up and he was all basically you know uh, stroking the biden administration's d and was like oh look i'm this is great this is life changing and it's like no you're full of shit. you know excuse my language but i mean that's what it, it yeah, I could go on for hours about this because it's it's a pretty passionate thing. And, and I just would like to, you know, I don't know. I just feel anytime there's something like that and we we have a great following, we have great people that support us and we just try to educate people along the way, especially like um, watching you and watching a number of other people starting to see this shift and, it's, and we're educating people now, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're enlightening people and, and this and that. And, and that's where I think that if that trend continues, well, I think we'll get, we'll actually get real change because we'll get so loud and so vocal that they can't ignore us. And that's where I say, 
screw going to them, let them come to us, right? And that way we can that way we can dig some you know dictate some terms, but that would require you know organization and and you know working as a block and working as a as a as a group going in unison and they, you know but we'll see how how it goes but we'll you know as long as people are going to listen to us we'll keep providing the education and information moving forward yeah and and you know we don't we shouldn't have to be apologetic about it either i like you know as if we come together on just like five core principles and let's push those five core principles and a lot of what we talked about is you know just the legal ramifications of it uh, which is very important the medicinal aspect is even greater you know for the benefits mm -hmm. that it can bring to people so there's so many different sides to the conversation that it, it's easy enough to, to probably build those five core things and then get together. Um, you well, know, I got a fun fact for you on that yeah. too. So there's uh, when they say, uh, you know, to reschedule to a schedule three or, or legalize it because so that way they can, um, they can study it. So the thing is, is the studying of the cannabis plan has never stopped. Right. No. But what they have spent most of the money on uh, when it came to studying the plant was the adverse effects of the plant. But we're talking, you know, since the 60s going heavy with this, uh, not just in the United States, but Israel. So the, the as a, as an example, uh, the NIH National Institute of Health, which is the government agency that runs the health in this country, they have spent one point seven billion dollars researching this plant since 2017. And more than half of that, more than half of that money, more than half of that money went to the negative effects of cannabis. So what are the results of the negative effects of cannabis? They're coming out and gaslighting the CHS. They're gaslighting a lot of stuff. But here's the thing. I don't deny that there's probably adverse effects in some sort of people just because you have such a high volume of people yeah. uh, partaking in, in edibles, smoking and all that. Where I disagree with that is, is there was no further... Uh, research on that, right? You know, well, now why all of a sudden is the thing? It's just as of late, just in the past couple of years, what are those changes, right? We have a mental health problem in this country. We have people that are stressed out. We have people that are uh, taking pills that are literally changing the makeup of their brain um, yeah. and told that it's healthy. And then also, too, we have a whole generation of kids that, you know, were chewing Adderall and ADD medication all the way coming up. So all that stuff is combined does take effect. And that so okay we have this but what's what's the cause of it what's let's keep studying this and all that so it's not a matter of whether they uh, uh they can you know study it or not those the studies have been going on forever so uh, i think it's the university of mississippi i mean they've been studying it uh, clearly since the 70s but also you have paper after paper after paper coming out of out of israel because they've been studying it uh you know for you know the past 50 60 years or something like that you know so when they say oh this is um it, it, it's basically another lie that you're that you're being told this it's being studied now you you know the the sad part is, is when you where you see it going because we have a small little snapshot of what the what the real root of everything is so there's a product there that's for um seizures that's uh really beneficial there's a balance What's that? The Epidiolex. Um, Epidiolex, right? So yeah. Epidiolex, when you look at the ingredients, is basically some fillers and sucrose, right? You add the sucrose because sucrose is a patentable formulation where the CBD isn't. But anyhow, with that CBD in there, it's basically 99% CBD oil, right? And uh, and what what do they do, right? They charge you $34,500 a year for this medication. And But the thing is, is you could almost make this medication for a fraction of that cost because anybody that can grow a plant and even if you're doing say ethanol extraction or if you're just even even doing just a basically a, a water wash with a with a press right you know you're you're going to extract that that nectar that great oil that's so beneficial and then like i said at a fraction of the cost but here's the thing i don't know how to make a vicodin i don't know how to make you know uh, antidepressant I don't know how to make any of that shit, right? I don't have, I don't know anything about pressing pills or anything like that, but I can grow with some of the best of them and I have an understanding of the plant. I have an understanding of the cannabinoid system. Now that is ever evolving. I'm going to continue to learn more, but also too, I get educated on the daily by listening to people and what they're saying and how they're going about and what helps them, right? Because not necessarily, it's not a cure-all, 
but when you can bring a lot of relief to a lot of people on a regular basis by a regimen and anybody that's you know understands this plant knows just growing it is therapeutic it's a lot of work here's the thing there's so much work when it comes to growing right and and in any sort of stage whether whether you're bringing it up from seed and doing a hunt or you're cloning you know from transplanting to maintaining the 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 life and the environment of your tent your closet grow room whatever you got right so you have a nine to five job that you're where your normal job and then you're coming home and then you have everything else on top of that but what i hear from a lot of people and even myself there's nothing better than being in front of your plants, watching watching them grow on a regular basis, and watching the results that you know that you get, and and being in that. It's like those plants start you just start to what synergize in a sense, or lack of a better word, with that plant. You start becoming you know almost one with that plant, but also too, you 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 you're on this journey with this plant. And everybody, I don't know, I even get, I even feel bad when I got to cut a plant down. You know, even on harvest, it's like, <laughs> emotionally <man>. invested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, but that's where. Uh, but also, too, when you're talking about whether it's in flower form, whether it's in whether it's an extraction form, and all that, it all has a purpose, and all help. At the end of the day, all helps people in the long run, and it helps the masses. It just doesn't help a couple people. It helps the vast majority of people. Now, like I said before, maybe it's not for everybody, so you might have to find something else that that might work for you. But when you start getting into more natural remedies uh stuff especially uh when you have better blood flow which is a direct correlation of having a good amount of cbd running through your blood your body heals faster thinks quicker there's a lot of really great attributes when it comes to cbd and then you have the the lower ones like um that le lesser known ones like they're starting to get a little bit of traction like cbg cbg is great for the gut they're finding out that cbg is in some cases is an actual study from the NIH, uh, Arena Pharmaceutics that got bought fi by Pfizer even was going to come out with a medication that treated Crohn's disease, which was primarily CBG. Right now, really? so yeah, it's it's really because when it comes to Crohn's, and if you know if you have Crohn's, or you know anybody that's ever dealt with Crohn's, yeah. um, it's a tough situation all around. And so the littlest relief, it's just like with the with the cbd and the epilepsy and the seizure medication anybody that's has seizures or has a you know kid or a friend or girlfriend wife whatever they realize you got to be on edge all the time so you can give a person just the slightest relief right you uh you know or a little bit of uh peace of mind that that's invaluable at that point you know so if you're you know like in some cases you're well you know uh run the reasons why we get to sit on here and talk openly about cannabis in exchange this information is, is because the people that laid the groundwork from the little girl named charlotte right that helped tremendously to the soccer moms driving from georgia to to denver and then driving back you know defying federal law across numerous states and if they would have got pulled over they would have been hemmed up forever yeah. those are the sacrifices the the rick simpsons and the you know the foregoing uh other treatments and being like yeah, i'm gonna try this and and just the number of people that were told they were out of options and to go home and be comfortable because they had to either deal with it or you know a slow death or whatever yeah. you put a human a, a back against the wall they're gonna push back so you have a choice fight or flight and the people that chose to to fight are the ones that really truly paved the way for a medical program that really pushed it now you're going to have all sorts of people piling in and in, in different you know views and different um uh scopes of type of things that people are going to do but the, when you really get down to the the core of it, it you got to really uh you know pay homage and, and mad respect for those people that really you know took the chance and the way they, the reason why they took the chance is because they found and thought there's going to be another way. There's another way. This you can't. This you know. Uh, there's got to be another way. You know, and that's where, in the the human, the human and a person. That's why. Uh, that's why I mean, like human nature. It's it's a it's phenomenal. It's amazing, and it's great to great to see. But also too, it it's really great to be a part of that and a part of that story and and all that because it's like when it when it comes to cannabis and hemp. We're like our own secret group without a code or a handshake, right? You know, it's like uh, you have a mutual respect no matter what what area or what you're what you're working in. You know, whether you know, so that's where 
yeah, that's that's gonna. Uh, I don't think that'll ever be lost. It won't ever be lost on me. But I mean, it's great to see. And but I was, I will always say, mad respect to the people that that really paid the the true, like essentially pioneers. Now, you still got the people that that grew that were defying obviously the law and all that, you know. And and that's where one thing there I was kind of curious when legalization was coming on here in Washington and everybody's building you know indoor right and it's like well we grew indoor because we were hiding it from the alphabet boys right you know uh why don't we why don't we get why don't we you know patch in some of these dutch folks and some of these folks in the netherlands that just great fucking on the on the glass on the greenhouses right the greenhouse grow type of situations where you can you can create an indoor environment but also use this big old huge orb in the sky and uh and go for efficiency right because i knew that the over time the they were going to come knocking so now you have all the utility companies coming knocking on your door now going hey we need to upgrade our system you know uh the cannabis industry is taking up too much power it's like well why don't you go knocking on the ev people right they suck up way more power than than this industry ever could you know so it's just gonna never never ending uh, hurdle after hurdle after hurdle, you know. The, this Sorry, industry, a little little sidetrack. Sorry. No, no worries. I mean, the, this industry will get shaked, shaken down at every possible point. Washington's a great example of that. But the studies you're talking about, and I know they did a lot at Mississippi, but NIDA, the National Institute of Drug Abuse, for the longest time would not approve a study unless it was to look at the negative effects. They, yeah. they wouldn't fund it. They would only fund the negative effects. And the Israel, you know, too, which you mentioned, they are an awesome place to look because they're the one of the few countries that actually do human trials. So important. So important to it. Yeah. Uh, well, we do human trials every day in small little fires, small <laughs> controlled fires every day, right? Yeah. So they, <laughs> right? So, this so is true. I'm conducting one now. <laughs> yeah, right? So you can't really, when you really think about it, Cats out of the bag. People are talking. People realize, hey, this, this is a full of it. But, but, they, but straight to your point, though, is, is yes, that they'll get a, they'll get ten times the money to something do, just happened. I'm sorry. Something so they can run that up the flag and be like, oh, see, we told you, we told you. But they keep coming up short, no matter how much money they spend. They keep coming up short because just short of a of a miracle plant. I mean, that's what this that's what this cannabis plant, cannabis and hemp, is essentially at this point becoming. More and more as the day passes, as a, as a mere plant. You know? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did your phone move at all? The audio just got very uh, tinny, very thin. Um, did anything to the speaker of the phone? No, or the microphone? Maybe get covered. How about now? No, my phone is around the spot. Uh, let, me, let me do this. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. Does that work? Oh, perfect. Thank you so yeah. much. I don't know what what the streamer does it every once in a while where it'll get all teeny. Sometimes you can reset it or or whatever. I'm enjoying the conversation, and this is you know this is. There's a lot of reasons why I like what you do. Um, the the education and the information that you bring to people. Um, the, the, God, that James Loud podcast or the podcast you did with James Loud just freaking phenomenal. Blew me away. I'm like, uh, this guy has got the right passion. He's in my home state. And he's freaking educated. Your Instagram is also a great place. That's where I see a lot of these things for the first time. So I, I do appreciate that. And I enjoy that. And that's probably why this is such a good and easy conversation to have. <laughs> it's a risk too. You know, like it's a risk to take. So um, even when uh, before the show, the way that uh, the conversation that James and I were having, I was like, you know, <clears throat> what kind of conversation do you want to have today? You know, and he just kind of gives a rundown. And I was like, well, let's, um, here's a couple of points that I would love to talk about. And he's like, oh, you can talk about whatever you want. And uh, I said, just because I feel that it's important. I feel important that um, that people get to hear and kind of understand some of the stuff. Like like hitting the points where you really, um, where you're kind of showing people that didn't know, because you even see it in the comments. Like a lot of people didn't realize how, you know, captured like the FDA is, right? How the special interests are really kind of the ones that are behind slowing everything down. Just stuff that, it's kind of, you know, it's stuff that you don't really care to talk about, but it is important because in the long run, 
it's going to affect everybody. Just because it hasn't affected you yet, it doesn't mean that it's not going to affect you down the line. And um, I really, you know, really respect what James has got going on there. It's really cool to to see where just you know these people coming in from all over and just kind of telling their story and and who they are and what they what they're doing. And then you have your podcast that's that's doing the same, which is really lean heavily towards education, which is which is really cool to see because the the amount of feedback and the responses and and the stuff that you get is 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 really cool and and that's and you seem like a really level-headed humbled person so uh because like i would rather not be a type of person that would want to be in front of the screen or you know uh, doing this it's just you like i said you just feel like you're you're you have to do it because if you stay silent and it all goes down it'll be a terrible time when somebody asks you well where in the hell were you you know, and you, you don't have an answer for that. You know, like, where were you? Where were you when this was going down? And, you know, we, but yeah, that's where ultimately, uh, like, it would be nice to find and get a group of people together and, and start a, you know, start a movement and let them run with it and then bring as much support behind them as possible. Because even the with in-house, in-house is two people. And, and this whole time we've always enjoyed showcasing everybody else right so it was like let's let's do some work let's put it out to the world and they're going to tell you whether it's a hit or not right so right. you know if it's if it's good or not they're going to tell you that's the you know the uh, the best way to do it and and that's um that's why all you know all those years it was just pictures of people put in work and that formed a, a big huge group of people out there that's uh, the in-house army you know, and 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 that's um, that's you know it's continued to continue to grow and just to uh, get the profound support that that in house has because it's about them, right? It's not not about us, right? And you know, um, and kind of you know shining and trying to spotlight on this side. So it's the spotlight should be is the people that are also just as passionate putting in the work and really making magic happen in any form of whether they're growing outdoor, whether they're growing in a closet, it doesn't matter where they're growing, as long as they're growing and having great results uh, doing it. And that's where I think the, where the new social media stuff and all that, it does get weird because we live in this real weird orbit or like realm of, of everything you say is, is essentially recorded and manipulated. You name it all the way through, you know, right. Uh, yeah. You live in a uh, really crazy cancel culture and I've had my words uh, mistaken and I've had, you know, where I've said something somewhere and people with, you know, and misunderstood it. And, and it's like, you know, if you're sitting there having to chase ghosts all the time and, and, and correct yourself, it's like, no, no, listen to it again. Even on some of the, some of the comments and some of the stuff they you know people are like no no read it read it again or read it twice or context you know, is important you know you don't get context with text right so i mean sorry you don't get emotional or feel when it comes to text but the what you always want to do and the what like the rule of thumb is is you want to always obviously be on the right side of history also to you want to be there and support people that are really, you know, putting in the work and really, uh, really making things happen. And, and, uh, because even on the dark days, right. If the, any glimmer of light gives you, you know, that much more, you know, power energy and, and, and more, you know, pushes you over the edge sometimes to really get, get things going. And, and that's a, that's the thing when you go back, um, like to the dark days of like, where it was really extremely legal, where if you had, you know, over 99 plants, it was a federal offense. And, and I, you know, I make a joke, but it was real serious. I used to wake up, yeah. you know, times where anxiety ridden because I'm like, oh my God, it's today the day, right? You know, because you hear something. Yeah. You have a couple of warehouses going and you just know if I got cracked, it was going to make the news, no doubt about it. Right. And, uh, and, but also, too, it's been interesting to see to be called a criminal and a uh, drug dealer and, and, this and that to uh, when the pandemic hit, we all became essential, right? Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely the glue that kept this shit show together was the was the cannabis was this plant and the people behind it and and whether you were whether you were from a grower to a bud tender to you name it, uh, really you know helped push people in what was considered one of the dark one of the darkest times in our history in a sense, you know, yeah. with the, with everything going on. But uh, but yeah, that's but yeah, no, that's where I think the and you know 
I like seeing people rise like yourself and get more popular over the years because it's great because you got you got a knack for it. You got this nice flow and you got the you got the respect of the community. So people aren't questioning you all the time, you know, being like, you know, that's the nice part is, is when you say something, people answer like, yeah, that's a pretty smart person. So I think, you know, right. I think, I think they're correct. Right. Or they at least can believe it. And we've lost that as a late when, you know, when our own, you know, it gets crazy to say, but like when your own news media lies to you or propagandized you and, you know, propaganda and this and that, but when you have somebody you respect that, he's like, I'm yet to see him lie. You know, I'm yet to see him, you know, do this and do that. And that's, that that is a show of respect across the board uh of people because it's like you know in a sense like your word is bond and if you say something yeah you mean it or you did the diligence and and all that not to say that you can't get it wrong but the nice part is is instead of attacking the person just show them where they're wrong in that way like you know what i didn't even see that or i didn't even look at it that way and this and that so and how you know how will they respond because a smart person is open to change in the face of new information and i mean like my my motives are pretty damn simple it's like i don't have a license i'm not a license holder so i'm not a stakeholder in the big game of you know this cannabis thing for what cannabis has done for me medicinally and I know, you know, we've touched on this. Cannabis is not for everyone, but it is for a hell of a lot more people that don't know about it yet that yeah, need this education. And I, I want to personally, I want to deliver just the right information to get them growing, to get them experiencing it. And then you can go down, you know, whatever rabbit hole you want. But the more people that are growing, the more people are going to hear about the benefits, more people that will have the benefits. And that's that's just that's my whole point. <laughs> Well, that's also too that it shows. I mean, there's a there's a big thing that you just brought up there. Like we just say, hey, I'm I don't really have skin in the game. I'm not a license holder. This and that. However, I've seen you a number of times now when I tap into the into Olympia. You know, uh, watching these hearings, right? You're right there, front and center, uh, with the microphone in front of your face, spitting facts, right? And, so yeah, thank you. Uh, hey, look, I, 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 I tapped into it. I was like, oh, look at that, man. Chad's down there, and I was kind of, I was, I kind of was kicking myself too, because normally I'm on top of it. Or, um, in fact, a uh, uh, ghost out there in Shelton, he'll hit me up all the time when something's going down or or this yeah. and that. He's been pretty informed, especially when it comes to Washington State. So it was really, it was a relief to see you down there in front of that microphone, though, because it was like, okay, here we go, right? And uh, but also too, it's uh, the, you know those those type of those type of situations kind of you know those make me happy to see because yes, it it is a long fight, it is a hard fight, and sometimes it doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere, but in reality. It's kind of like a springboard. It's like you know, um, it's you know, ratcheting up, ratcheting up, and and then once it once it releases, it's like a it's like a flood, right? You know. So, uh, but mad respect for you. But that's where I say is is like you doing what you do, and, and and we've talked about James and a handful of other like even on these even on these Instagram lives that you see, right? People are talking about all sorts of discussions and, you know, and, and all sorts of, you know, uh, growers jumping on there. There's a couple on there where they only have like five or six people, but it's their group. It's like they, you can tap in and watch them, but they're just talking about what they're growing, what they're going to grow next. And like what, you know, and basically uh, just talking amongst themselves, they all live in different parts of the country. Uh, so instead of doing it like on a zoom or something like that, they just were like, Hey, look, if you guys want to cycle through, but, uh, but yeah, they're down in uh, Virginia. They got a nice little uh, grow group, and then they have a couple that are uh, spread out the, the Midwest, you know, and that's where they just exchanging ideas. And that's the thing too I see is really showing that and, and talking about that and, and having these conversations. And that's um, like even with uh, the projects that we've put on in the past, the main goal and the main focus is is to put a bunch of people together that otherwise wouldn't know each other. And and that's really the plain and simple. Uh, reason behind the behind them you know um like uh we put on a project a couple years back which was one world one plant yep. and that just started in a in an instagram live and somebody had an idea they were like what if everybody grew the same thing across the world and it was like what if you had them all start on the same day <laughs> right you know like all of a sudden right. you know they, it just started first from there next thing you know we got a um, a guy out of Africa called Canter Crew. He was like, "Let's call it One World, One Plant." And 
And, uh, and so, you know, all of a sudden these ideas started coming and then, um, I talked to, I talked to a couple of people and I was like, Hey, you know, should we put this, want to put this on? And, uh, next thing you know, we're, uh, we're making up these little, uh, paper envelopes and literally sending them across the world and, uh, getting them into places. I mean, we were able to get, they were able to get, oh, audio cut out. They were able to get, um, can you hear me now? Yeah, we're good. They we're were good. able to get Iran, and Malaysia, uh, all through the South Pacific. I mean, the craziest places on the on the address list, and it was really cool because everybody started on New Year's, and you just saw that hashtag just go berserk crazy of everybody starting. But everybody was working. What what I saw though was a couple things: the emails of people being like, "Yeah, shit's been kind of nasty for me or bad for me. This gives me something to look forward to." Uh, all these emails were were really cool to see because without even knowing these people, there's an impact in there. There's a positive impact. And then another thing that I saw, which was really cool, is by grouping people up in groups, they went and crossed over to other groups and kind of formed their own groups. But now are past the one world, one plant grow thing, but now are still in contact with each other, talking about growing and all that. And they didn't know each other before that. And that's where I think where the real magic will, you know, happen. And we didn't know where it was going to go. We didn't know if it was going to be a dud, but, or what, but it would, but the amount of feedback and the amount of people that were excited about it. Um, we have a couple of things on deck where uh, I'm going to uh, do it again. We, uh, we sent a bunch to Thailand with a friend of mine and uh, there was a line of people that came to get them, but it's just fun to do because it, it if you're, if you're getting them, and you're getting that, you know, we, you know, you're getting them for free. So if they, you know, if you destroy them or if they don't work out, whatever the hell, you know, no harm, no foul, right? But at least you're you're part of something that a bunch of other people are doing. And that's where the where these ideas that we get just kind of spurs from somebody just throwing something out, and then you'd be like, oh wait, 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 hold on, what if, you know, because that's where all cool stuff happens. Is what <laughs> exactly, if, right? What <laughs> if, what if, and then, um, so yeah, so uh, uh, we got a. Uh, they're going to be kicking off South Africa. There's going to be people in the United States that are going to get uh, some more of the one world, one plant packs. And, and they're the cool part is, is everything is that when it comes to home growers, we want to make it as like, uh, you know, as custom or hands-on as possible. So that's why we hand stamp the, the envelopes, right. You know, and then we sort the seeds, put the seeds in there. Everything is touched by hand all the way through. So by the time it gets to you, there's a there's a clear like you know thing. There's like this is this is about as as you know craft as you're gonna get in a sense, you know, or like as custom as possible. And and then uh, we got one that's coming up that we're gonna do uh, specifically based around home growers again, which is the three six nine project, which is kind of a Tesla theory that you know. Um, Tesla theory is, is that everything leads back to 369, right? Doesn't matter how much uh, you put into it, doesn't lose energy, doesn't gain energy. It's all, you know, maintains a uh, full circle type of situation. And I wanted to do something cool. So I, there are a lot of work, but I was like, I'm going to make wood blocks. <laughs> right? yes. so, yeah. I wanted to talk about that because I saw, I saw your post, the block project, basically. What, what is this going to be? Well, project. okay, this is what I have is I got a, I got a bunch of these blocks here that are all prototypes. Okay. Awesome. Right. So, uh, so the, um, since we haven't really get really any, I mean, papers recyclable, all that stuff. But what I wanted to do was do a couple things. I wanted to show and let home growers know how important they are by putting something really cool together specifically for them. And now like, we'll probably do other stuff in the future with it, but the first wave of people that are gonna be home growers, but what, it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take people that have the people that their audience and then let them give it to people that they feel that, uh, you know, not deserving, but what, how are they do it? But it'll get to an actual home grower. So when we started, when I was really thinking about it, I was like envelope and the, and the you know, basically the button or, the you know the cap for the you know i was like hey i want to try something a little bit different so just talking to a couple of people i was like what if we what if i made it out of a wood block and then made so that the uh that the seeds would sit in the wood block right and so what i ended up coming up with was 
these blanks here, right? As you can see there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, then you're, uh, oh, that one had seeds in it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, so it's just basically uh, a wood block, and then it's got the little dowel on the top. Oh, goes on the top of it, right? So, you know, they, you can, they, you got to really pull them apart. And uh, so, yeah, and then they just did some etching on it, right? Um, like, here's, here's one that's finished. Okay. So, uh, and then it just has a number, which will correspond with the, uh, uh, with whatever uh, seeds that go in there. Okay. And then, not going to tell you at first what it is, which is why it has the the question mark. But it'll be something great because there's there's a couple people that uh, a couple of other breeders that are going to jump on it in on it too. So they'll, they'll be just issued a number, and then it'll give it out to the home growers. Um, they'll give you some hints, you know, of that just to, get, to get you going. But it'll be more like a reveal later type of type of thing. And That's then fun for everybody. And then just a message, you know, just keep growing, yeah, which yeah. is. Um, which is uh key for for anybody and so that's where as you know as this thing was developing because this is something that uh uh i've been working on for a number of months uh, i've got uh tino genetics has been uh helping out a lot with it too especially on the, some of the ideas and this and that but the cool part is is the home grower will get a block uh maybe i'll do something cool in like a decade like if you still have this block hit me up you know right or um also too if you throw it away guess what it'll biodegrade you know it's just a uh but i use uh um, you know cured lumber right so uh uh kiln dried lumber to make these so inside there is a six percent five percent moisture content so that you're not um the you know the seeds aren't going to start sprouting while they're inside there but the cool part is is when it, with wood you could have it you know 90 or 100 120 on the outside of the wood but inside of it is going to maintain maintain the uh you know the right climate for for that you know that's so, freaking cool yeah and uh you know and that's like that's what i'm talking about it was just um another conversation uh, i'm having with people and then it was just kind of what if and what if and in there to be to be truthful with you man it, they're a lot of work to make um i, I can I, only imagine I worked with worked with wood my whole life i don't really care to necessarily get my fingers that close you know right but uh but at the same time they're they're worth making because the when you when you actually have them in hand and feel them and, and see it you're just like oh, okay this is this is cool this is this is legit and you know and it's coming up with a theme that everybody could get behind because yeah. the cool part is is this it opens up to other people to be a part of it and you just issued a number right so then you're you know you can do it from there so if some people you know i have a sense like because i've gotten a couple messages from people be like oh can i jump in on this and then that way you can just issue them a number and then that's their number for the you know and send it out to these folks to give out the home growers and and let them have a lot of fun with it and see where it goes but also too i think that um is it might evolve into an actual home grower built brand that people can get behind because there's no the train has left the station there that you know everything's going to be eventually legalized or there's going to be an industry here but also too i'm a firm believer in is, is we can make it whatever we want and we can yeah. do uh and we can we could go any any path you know like one thing i kind of interesting that i yet to see and wonder why we don't have it is, is with all the home growers and all these growers like why is there not like a, a coalition of of growers that you know uh, coming together to uh, get into the consolidation that's currently happening in the in the market you know uh yeah. there's enough people and that are like yourself and around that could really spearhead that you know and and uh and not have you know basically a a co-op publicly traded company that goes in and 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 you know grows grows fire and then you know gets it through the system and and all that you just what i like attribute that to is working with in the confines of what's being presented to you and what's your what's coming right you know so there's no you know like i said there's no going back and also too even if they came tomorrow and was like hey we're gonna go back and 
and strip the states of their rights and we're going to go back and you know this is going to be completely illegal again right back to prohibition good luck all of us wouldn't give a shit right because nothing's going to stop for us right <laughs> oh yeah okay well we're going to take it right back underground you know right like a lot of us would actually prefer that you know um like when Sessions said he was going to shut the states down there was a lot of people like hey get out Get out of sessions. Make it happen. Make it happen. Get rid of the coal memorandum. Coal who? Coal what? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But the state said, "Hey, hey, 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 hey! You're not getting rid of this cash cow, right?" That's why I knew that it wasn't going to go anywhere because they're not going to look. The state, especially Washington. Washington is the most greediest. Thing. As soon as they get a little taste of money from something, right? Yeah. If they could tax you, if they could, if they could tax your grandma for the extra meal that she, you know. <laughs> It's, they would do that too. It's so crazy. Like we get, yeah. our, our taxes get taxed on. We live in one of the most expensive states ever. You know, there, there's there's a reason why no emerging state references Washington as an example to look to. But I will, on the plus side, it still needs to be signed into law. They are getting rid of the 37 percent excise tax for medicinal patients. 37 percent, 40 percent of that sale. Because you got to include state and local or, or local tax as well. Forty percent of any sale for people that don't understand Washington is tax. Which yeah, is but crazy. also too, the tough part is is that that came a decade too late. So as an example, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, the the medical the medical so Washington Washington Michigan uh, California few of these uh, markets had a true medical aspect to yeah. to them right and uh, people were foregoing pharmaceuticals finding stuff in the dispensaries because because i uh even though we had a ton of dispensaries all around us there was dispensaries that would literally help people walk people through and give suggestions mm -hmm. and there was a, like a true you know uh, uh leaning towards that so but what was what was tragic to see was that i think it was at an april april 10th or april 8th the, the, the transition day remember the transition day it was like Sad. all those medical patients were on the outside left you know left on the outside all those dispensaries shut down and all those medical patients and they it's not even like they could go to the store and it was like you know and and get what they were getting before because even in those first couple of years everything that was in the retail was trash and the vast majority of the money came from the nostalgic basically 50 year old to 70 year old demographic going into those stores and since they have a gatekeeper operation and our gatekeeper system in Washington, the dispensary or the retail owners were like, well, I just want the cheapest stuff I can possibly get because I still got the customer base for it. And then when that 50 to when that demographic dried up, that was when it was time for the craft growers, the people that are really growing fire to shine because they had they were like, hey, we got to get this other demographic in here, this this 30 to 50 year old demographic. And the only way we're going to do that is by getting a higher quality because they know what quality is where this other demographic did it. And so that was, you know, year two to four to five. Right. And then like anything, it kind of leveled out and then they just kind of went back. And now you're now you got to, you know, it's like the, the stores hold all the power. Right. And and uh, they they can dictate and they can make or break your company. And that's sad because I think in Washington, I think it's like you should be able to do how they do um, brew pubs, right? You know, so if you build, if you brew your own beer, you can actually have a, a serving in your facility, yeah. in your building. That's a legal thing here. And in fact, um, the reason why Ballard is so expensive and so popular here in Seattle is because all those little brew pubs that popped up in the late 90s and early 2000s, and they open that up. So now, if you could have, and then that way, I would like to see something like that or a model like that, because then the person could educate them as they come in, right? They can educate them on the process. They could educate them on the different, you know, what's the difference, you know, because a lot some people don't understand the difference between edibles and milligrams and all that, you know, and you you can't you can't expect a, a bud tender that's in many cases making a minimum wage to retain or have that knowledge in the first place. Not 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 knocking on them at all, not saying that they're, that they're not out there, but also too, that's that's an extra way extra step than doesn't correlate with what your you know what your wages kind of type of type of deal. And it doesn't also, yeah, it doesn't relate back into your management's goals too of we need to sell this. So we've got twenty dollars for whoever sells X amount of this brand by this yeah, day. And even, 
And you get to see just as well as I do that um, our legislators only go off of what they read and what they're told by, say, a lobby or um, or the boogeyman, right? Because I've been down there and listened to uh, listened to the testimonies. Like one of the funny things is you have that group, the Sam group, right? And everywhere you go, it's the same five people that get on there and say, you know, all this crazy shit, right? And then, uh, and and they're and it's like it's like the same five people. I've seen the same five people in Washington. I've seen the same five people in Oregon doing these testimonies. I've seen the same ones in Missouri. I've seen the same ones uh, in uh, Virginia when they were holding uh, the testimony. But it's it, it's comedic. But at the same time, you have this whole other group of people. I remember. Uh, the, the one that was the last session, that room was full, right? Uh, uh, and then you have the one, um, uh, one uh, uh, lawmaker that has a camera follower, and she's anti everything. Uh, her name escapes me right now, but but it's but to listen to them talk, especially like the lawmakers, it, it's frustrating because it's like, how can you still be this ignorant when we have the vast world of knowledge at our fingertips? on a device that we're talking on right now, whether it's a computer, whether it's the phone and all that. So the ignorance, you have no excuse being ignorant now when it comes to cannabis, because it doesn't take much to look and read and go through and, and get educated on it. But if somebody's just handing you something, this is how you're supposed to vote, then it doesn't matter what information comes out because that's that's where they're gonna lean to or they're you know, they're not gonna not gonna kick the gift horse in the mouth, you know. Just like we'll never go backwards because the states are making billions and they're never going to give that money up and they will they will they will fight the government in order to keep they'll fight the federal government in order to keep that you know and so it's here to stay now it's the now it's like well how do we you know how do we continue to work in this work in this model and and you know and still continue to be successful in washington it seems like the legis it, it seems like the legislators are spoon fed their information by vested interests because some of it is so nonsensical. It's like, how did you even come to that conclusion? Like that is an obviously skewed and biased perspective to have. Uh, it, just as far as the random out there mentions that the um, testimony that I gave earlier this year for the home grow in Washington, one of the legislators concerns up there is like, okay, so if everybody can grow six plants per house, and let's say everybody on the neighborhood starts growing it. Do we have to worry about like chemicals in the water and runoff? Yeah. That's hey, an actual okay. Valid concern like this big because she didn't ask about what they're putting in their lawn, what they're putting on that. She's also assuming everybody is going to grow, which we both know they're not. But to, to hear that as a legitimate concern coming from someone, it's like you're, you know, it's like your pulse is here. Your finger is down here. Oh, the another one when I went to uh, initially last session about the home grow, they were like, "What happens if the kids get in the tent, like, or into your grow space?" Well, they they're gonna they're gonna get a little bit of LED light on them, or you know, how light, whatever you're growing, right? Uh, you could eat the plant all day long; you're not gonna get high because it's not activated, right? But that's also to say, now if you came out, if you came out and wanted to pass legislation to be like. No home brewing whatsoever in the in in Washington State. You would oh you would oh my god the, the amount of backlash you would get it would be unbelievable. There's no different from if you're growing a few plants in your house. There's no difference between that and brewing up some you know a five gallon jug of your IPA or or stout or whatever. There's not no difference of that, right? You know yes you might share it with your friends. But you're not going to hurt InBev. You're not going to hurt these, you know, these, uh, these uh, basically breweries, right? You know. So, but also with that is is the reason why I really feel home grow is important because it creates it creates not just the genetic diversity that's going to stay alive, but it keeps a balance, right? So, for instance, if you can't find what you're looking for or there's not being provided for you you have the option to go and create it yourself, right? Or grow it yourself. And, you know, it's like uh, where the, uh, you know, that's why I always think that the model that cannabis could really uh, benefit from is the craft brew model on how it came up. And you go back to the late eighties, early nineties. That's why we have a variety. That's why we have the innovation that we have 
is because the people that were brewing it in their basements and garages and and on their spare time. That's why we have IPA. So you know, I've I've had people you know uh, kind of be you know push back on that with me, being like, that's a bad way to look. No, no, no. It's an industry. It doesn't matter what it, it it fits. It's a model, right? You just exchange one thing for the other. You're not condoning alcohol, right? You know, you're not. There's nothing nothing to be there. But that's uh. But one of the things is is that model. It would be a really great model because what it does is is like like Chad. He hits me up and goes, "Hey man, I got something pretty unique over here, right? You know." And it's like, you know what? I'm gonna come check that out and I want to see that, right? You know, and then you're gonna hit me up, you know, like, hey, you know, Brandon, you gotta, you gotta, this is gonna be, this is gonna be something, right? Like, oh well, you know what? You grow in deep water culture. Let me get you a cut, and I want to see what it does under that. I want to know what it does in your conditions, right? And then next thing you know, it's like, yeah, this thing doesn't like soil, but it loves, yeah, you know, it loves NFT. It loves, you know, whatever, whatever it is, right? You know, so that's where I think the the innovation and all that comes from and that's where the information starts to compile and you and you have a uh and you have a lot of people working on one thing so so you go back to the 60s 70s right you know you had nasa that used to open they used to open up all their patents because that means thousands of people could work on the same thing right you know so why couldn't we do that here where you have thousands of people working on the same thing instead of you know, trying to leave it up to the private sector where they're going to work on it, come up and develop it and then shelve it or not let it out. Right. You know, how many innovations do you think that are out there that are on the shelf right now? Because it'll, you know, take away from their bottom line. And so that's where I think that this plant should be free for anybody to work off of. I think that um, we, it, it, we need to kind of go back and get back the, the missing cannabinoids that this big mad rush for uh, THC. Right. Uh, it's been a great ride up. It's been uh, it, it's got its flaws, but also, too, it's like when you think about it is, is we're not going if we're going to go and have a, you know, a shot. It's going to be like a whiskey or it's going to be a bourbon. It's going to be something that tastes good. We don't pull up to the bar and go, give me that corn, that 151 or that, you know, Everclear, you know, because I'm going to get drunk. Right. You know, but what, ultimately what my point is, is is the cannabinoids affect your body as a whole so the so that's where if we start getting back into the higher uh cbd cbg cbn and um i think we'll get back to what we really really desire and we talk about all the time back in the day that really gas that really pungent you know uh, uh great smell and weed that would linger and you could you know you'd have to set up two or three extra filters so you know uh you know neighbors didn't find out that what you were growing type of type of thing you know there, there's a lot of things that we are missing out particularly those minor cannabinoids and who knows terpenes flavonoids styles the you know the whole thing there that we we have unintentionally bred out there's a lot of like the old timers i call them you know like people uh, from the 70s and the 60s whenever i talk to them about like effects they they say it was different and they you know it was more psychedelic but those are typically the people who distinguish between high and stoned you know yeah. and to, to me, it's, it's just all the same, but it's, it's those minor cannabinoids that I kind of attribute to their experience that, like you said, kind of through time and through breeding, focusing in one direction, we've lost. And then you have a, you have a tale of two tales here going on that, that get mixed or get lost in translations. I'm not sure exactly how it gets lost, but traditionally, West Coast, really relaxing, indica dominant, um, a lot of the stuff that uh, in the early years, but especially up in Humboldt, they got a lot of the genetics from the Mideast and Afghanistan and, and through that region, right? So that came back. And so that just, you know, basically West Coast was high indica. And then at the same time, a lot of the popular strains and a lot of the things that was going on in the East Coast was all sativa, right? Yeah. You know, uh, so, so when you go back and you look at the history, a lot of the stuff that they still talk about from the past was sativa dominant. And uh, so, you, you you know, you have the tale of two different tales. So what you got now is, is we have this open conversation with people on the East Coast, the West Coast, the Midwest, all that stuff. So you have all this thing and then you have the hybridization of, of the plants and you're all this stuff. So now it's just this big old huge smorgasbord of, of things. And it's, um, you know, you got to kind of see the patterns and kind of, you know, uh, differentiate on, on what's what. Because what could be popular and say, Phoenix, Arizona, sure the hell ain't going to be popular in Portland, Maine, 
right? You know, um, and vice versa. You might have some inroads there, but that's where I think um, just as a country, how diverse we are as a country and, and, you know, like we're huge. Like I don't think of, you know, especially like people that are from Europe and all that, they don't realize how big the United States is in in some cases, we have like five or six different languages that we call English, right? So yes, we, we do, we do, right? But uh, but what I'm getting at is, is is identifying that type of stuff and then working, identifying those traits and that uh, type of situations and looking and understanding the history in your past really helps you in the future because that way you're not like basically shooting off and leading into the dark. And that's where I think on the in-house front, where we've gained so much uh, trust and respect and, and success over the years is because we paid attention to what people were talking about. And really the, we're like, okay, let's try to get as close to what people are talking about, or this is gonna be the next thing. Let's be on the forefront of that. And then, you know, especially in those early years, right? Getting those, getting those color variations, getting those trichome builds, right? Uh, all that, you're just like, you, you, it, was, it was newer. It was all coming, like basically you're coming up as a group but you're starting to see it more and more it's like uh it's like that you know even back in the 70s where you expected seeds in your in your in your flower in your buds you know to to now you you got these you know i mean they're they're modeled buds essentially right yeah yeah and it's uh design exactly designer and they're beautiful but also too like uh it's funny because you get uh like these some of these folks some of the best growers, I can tell you right now, hands down, some of the best growers are tent growers. I don't know why anybody would ever knock somebody that grows in a tent or act like that's supposed to be something you're not supposed to do or whatever the hell it is. Because I can tell you, the pictures that that we get tagged in that come through our DMs, and you can see that signature reflective uh, mylar in the back that's to the tent, killing it, killing it, right? And so... You're just like, and then, you know, that's why I always tell people like, you know, that, that if you own a grove, go, go start seeking these people out because they're, you know, like the, the high, the quality is there. The, the, the talent is there. You just got to go, go find it and put it together, you know? But yeah, that's why I never understand when people knock uh, tent growers or whatever, like somebody posted a, I put it in my, uh, posted about it the other day where they were trying to say you're dusty, you're, you're, your wet basement and, and moldy weed and this and that. And it's like, I've seen more mold in the, in the rec, you know, in the retail side of things and the legalization than I've ever seen in a medical grow or, or a home grow. Cause you know why? Cause the medical grows and the home grows, people actually put pride in, you know, their, their reputation, their friends are going to see this. Their people that they respect are going to see this. That's why you, you know, that's why you don't have the issues that you're, that you have, in there where they're just basically you know throwing a body in there and here's uh here's something you should follow not to say all of them are like that i mean like i'm saying is focusing on on the, the the bad that we get to see on a regular basis not to say that there's not people out there in the in the rec world killing it it just unfortunately they're getting overshadowed by the people that are able to market this poop or you know this this trash and then being able to also monopolize and put influence on on politicians so they get the better upper hand on stuff right so that you're losing the mom and pop you're losing the craft growers you're losing like like all shit rolls downhill and if we don't pay attention we're going to end up with just five strains you don't like it you know uh too bad right you know or you, you know you're going to get it's just going to be it could be it could turn bad in the, in the long run it's going to reduce the choices. But I mean, like you said earlier, and this is why I really applaud you for building such a community and supporting the home growers. I honestly think that it's going to be the home tent growers that keeps the diversity alive. Um, for better or worse, you know, there's a lot of things being found and genetics being made that are bringing some unique expression. So whereas uh, commercially, it may not be a viable option to hunt through all these seeds for something that may not produce what you want, but the home grower can. They will be able to find that exotic flavor. And because we don't have a, a per gram per light, you know, quota that we have to meet, we're able to grow some of those things. You know, we always call it head stash. Everybody knows head stash is usually always the best stuff, but a lot of that head stash wasn't necessarily commercially viable either. So, yeah, we also. What I'm afraid of is um, is the low yielding, high quality, uh, loaded up with the right type of cannabinoids, 
strain getting lost or eliminated because uh, it's not grown or commercial farm won't grow because it doesn't hit that number. Does that make, does that make sense? Right. So like uh, we have, what's that? Well, I was going to say, yeah, because I'm a flower guy, like concentrates are cool. They're great. They have their place, but I'm really a flower guy. And I know a lot of strains now are not being grown because they may not wash well. Mm -hmm. And we are going to lose some amazing flower because it doesn't wash well. But yeah, thank you for letting me yeah, know. It's, you see it where it's like, oh, it's a little yielder. It needs to, it needs to go. But that's but that's also too that's that's a typical you know corporate America for you right instead of having something that's quality in and, and getting a customer base that'll come forward it's like oh no no I'm just going to go with the next thing and, and you know it's like the you know the Walmart effect if it breaks I'll I'll throw it away and just go get another one and that's why I think um, that's why I was saying uh, earlier to you uh, was going back through the old notebooks and going back and seeing stuff that was grown 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and just being like wishing that you still had that, you know, lineup or you like, you know, had that cultivar, if anything. And so there's more, there's a lot of great stuff that is, that has come and gone. And I think that that trend will continue just the way that the, uh, the way that it looks and the outlook on that. But yeah, absolutely. Like even with uh, like, I mean, the advice for like uh, commercial growers is go find these home growers and go you know what how many how many seeds can you hunt you know uh on a, any particular run and whether it's 30 seeds or whether it's, whether it's 100 or whatever right you know then send that you know get them hunting and let them get the and let them perfect it and then compensate them for their work and all that and then move on to your next set because that's where like i said that's where they're, they're going to perfect it is at that home grower level you know the guy or woman with that tent that's going to make magic and be like, yeah, yeah, I had 10 cultivars to choose from. I narrowed it down to just this one. This one is this one is it. You need to get that into your rotation and utilize utilize that base. It's like I said, that base is phenomenal. They're killing it every day. And, you know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot to be had in, in that and to, to ignore that. I just really feel like you're doing they're doing themselves a disservice, you know. Another thing that I like about, you know, the one world, one plant. Um, and as well as the the 369 project is we, we, we get to crowdsource. We get to learn together. We can crowdsource our learning and our experience because we can only grow a certain number of plants per year. Uh, we only have so much time. But when you get 10 different people growing it, you know, maybe DWC, maybe a person's soil, we all get to learn from that with that particular mm -hmm. plant, which is why I love these kind of projects. Because A, it not only builds community, B, it gets people growing better and it gets them growing faster. Uh, but C, it's 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 exciting. It Again, yeah. it, it builds that and bond, which we need to have because we'll, we'll, we will go so much further as a group than we will as an individual in mm -hmm. this grand scheme of things. Yeah. And the cool part, the cool part is, is, is you don't really, you got, you got the basics and the building blocks of the situation where it goes from there will be up to the people that participate in it and the, and wherever, wherever they're going to take it. And then you're just matching that energy. So if they're having great success with it and they're like, Hey, you know what? Let's look at this. Let's roll into this. Let's roll into that. That's like where, like I was mentioning before, and some of the stuff that that we're doing in some of these projects, whether it's One World Three Six Nine or uh, consulting or working with some of these uh, uh, commercial aspects around the country, I was like, hey, let's incorporate these people. Let's incorporate. You'd be surprised when you when you start uh, incorporating particular situations on on how well it goes and the and the better results that you're going to get, you know, and and you know and that's just outside the box thinking and also to investing in people that's really i think uh at the end of the day is you're just investing in yourself and and to the people because they're going to go out and they're going to go out and do it eight right you, but you if you can help speed that up or give support to to better the situation then then that's, that's it's you're you're morally obligated to do that you know right and yeah so that's where i think even over the years building the relationships and you know, having the same, you know, the same set of friends, you know, from even from childhood and all that, it goes to show is like, you know, you build these bridges and, and they don't, you don't burn them. Right. You know, cause if you got to cross back over them and, and be, you know, I wouldn't say 
Right. I wouldn't say that I've gotten along with everybody, but there's some people where I'm like, yeah, never again. I'll never speak to them. I won't even entertain them. It just, you know, this this just doesn't go anywhere. But also too, in this in this space, I've met some people that I know I'm probably gonna know for the rest of my life. People that are truly genuine, like you know, uh, for you, you know, and and then you also have people that are just there for a long long for the ride and and all that. So you know, it's just identifying your surroundings. But one thing that I really enjoy. On especially on these projects, is you're just in you're putting the power to people and being like, hey, go make something happen, you know. And also too, guess what? If you fail, no problem. Just do it again, right? Try over, right? Hit the reset button, <laughs> right? It, it, that, but you know, if if you're look, if it was easy, literally everybody would, right? So since it's not easy, but also I want to touch on this real quick: the amount of skill set people learn just by growing. They learn scheduling, right? They learn the difference between ounces and milliliters, right? They the math. There's so many learning points that you learn through this whole process to make you better in life in general. You know, and that's why I never understand like how can some people that grow this plant also be an asshole too? It is like a riddle and a phenomenon that I've yet to figure out or understand. But how can you you have to be grow this plant and be just the attitude and the way that you are. But it's a little little bad joke. But anyway, what I, ultimately what I'm getting at is is, is uh, just the the quality and everything. Because the everything that you put into this plant, it not only gives back, but also too on how you shape it, it could give you back ten times the amount that you put into it. And and that's the, that's the cool part. And that's one of the rare things in life that will do that. Right? I mean, maybe obviously, you know, your pet. Right? kid or something like that but in nature in itself that's found found nature and naturally is this is, is this plant you know yep. the phone the phone just got tinny again oh no it just <laughs> only like 10 seconds worth but oh. uh is it good now no all right i'll come back in one second okay <laughs> sorry okay yeah i don't know what right. happened you sound great and you're back. Uh, the, the thing, you know, we're kind of talking about, which, which you mentioned earlier too, is just like the long-term relationships. When we're, you know, we're into this for the long-term. So of course we're going to meet some people and invite some people in that we learn over time aren't the people we want to work with. That's just the course of nature. That's just putting yourself out there. But we're also going to find those people who are in it for the long-term like yourself, you know, that have well, a vision and a purpose behind it more so than just what's happening it's, today. It's also to that point though, it's like, um, you might work on a project with somebody and that project run its course. And then uh, when the next one comes, maybe they don't want to be a part of it, but maybe two or three projects down the line, they'd be like, you know what, actually, yeah, I got time. Cause a lot of times it's just time management and all that. So I would say a lot uh, on that it would be is, is you're, you, you, you're going to always know people and you're always going to have friends. Right. And then um, when it comes to like projects or business and all that, it, it you got to differentiate the two, right. You got to separate the, separate the two and, and know the difference, right. That your personal stuff doesn't bleed over and vice versa. And I think a lot of people in this particular realm make that mistake because where they, where they take something personal and, uh, and that's stuff that you've had to learn over the years is, um, is, you know, not taking something that's business related personal, you know, and, and once you, you know, once you learn a lot of these little different aspects and all that, you run and operate quite a bit differently, you know? And, uh, and so it's like, even with in-house and, and my, you know, my partners, like at the end of the day, this, this, this is a business. This is, there's a lot <clears throat> a responsibility that comes with this. And so, you know, you, you, you have this emphasis that, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, everything is, you know, everything is in order and in place and making sure that uh, the people understand how important they are, how important, you know, that we're a part of their story. They're a part of our story and, and encompassing all that. But also, too, it's like, um, you know, you got to you got to conduct and handle yourself in a, in a manner that uh, that's that's good that everybody, you know, that everybody respects. You know what I mean? Right. So if we come out and we're just rude to people. Or, yeah. you know, <clears throat> like, uh, like some people make their reputation off of slamming other people. 100%. I don't, I don't right? Like, <laughs> like uh, you know, like you'll never see, you'll never see us talk down on somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Or if we're, 
it, like you might joke around and you know you might have the i've, I've seen that where, I, where, where i've known somebody and we joked around and somebody took it out of context i'm like well actually i know that person uh right. but but when it comes to like uh knocking other people's work in in itself i mean people do it to us all the time but you'll never you'll never see us post and, and knock somebody's work and their grind and their hustle and and whatnot because that's just not who we are because we respect we respect that grind we respect that hustle you know uh you know that um you know it's at the end of the day you know look we'll always pray for peace but we'll always stay ready for war and that's the thing is standing on what you believe in so if you if you want to come and and take shots at us expect a response expect a, you know somebody to ask you you know well, well what you know show me where this is or whatever and 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 we've had to do that a number of times where somebody said something and then it's like well oh, hey right here to yeah. explain it to me real quick and um because you want to know for yourself if you did something wrong or if you're wrong yeah. but also too you can't come with a rumor you know my friend i heard from somebody else that i respect or somebody that i know and it's like you know, but yeah, I think it's just a combination of the of the new media that we're in and this and that. And I mean, we're far from perfect, but at the same time, uh, we have a lot of we have a lot of great things going, and and we build off of that, and we keep building off of that, and 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 always always moving forward. And so um, now is the next uh, uh, big uh, situation, whether you know, like where there all the old guard is now kind of shifting right you know all these people that have been relevant for the past decade that's starting to shift yep. is there is there going to be a turnover absolutely watching these people you know put in the work and put in that grind you know when it's when that when you're not in the light you know in the light anymore right then you know but that's that's why i'm that's what i'm just kind of starting to see i'm starting to see some of these people really coming out of nowhere and, and really really putting in the work and, and trying to make a name for themselves and it's really exciting to see and that's something definitely you want to you want to support along the way you know and as long as we can be innovative and and listen to you guys and all that we feel comfortable on what we do and that's why we don't ever look at anybody else as competition you know right we don't look at anything in the field as competition because the way we see it is, is like unless you speak a language we don't understand right we're going to try to have it ready or on deck you know something that you're going to like of a flavor profile whatever it is we're going to try to have something uh something on deck for you when the when the time comes you know and um but yeah that's where uh you know that's where we'd love to be and that's where the especially just in the past six seven years exclusively where we've been has been right in that right in that realm and that's good to continually, you know, grow yourself and diversify yourself, because like you said, there will be, you know, at some point, we're probably already seeing it a little bit of a changing of the guard. And, and I could do this, you know, with multiple industries I've been in music, skateboarding, um, you know, skateboarding is an easy one, because the things that got me sponsored 30 years ago are things that like four year olds are doing today. The kids <laughs> that start today start with, oh, a 13 stair handrail that's just what you do so i'm just going to go do it back when i was doing it that was like the scariest thing in the world maybe two people are trying it at the time but now it's just like that's just what you do and so it's like the level of the game it keeps going up which is good because it should but if yeah, you get it stuck in the past you're going to be eclipsed and sometimes that doesn't make people feel good and it's also interesting too because the big names in the industry, you know, like um, they don't really, they're not very highly vocal about the changes and using, you know, essentially the platform that they have to to kind of show like, hey, this is going to be a problem or, you know, this is overregulated or this is going to hurt the patient. This is her going to hurt the consumer. There's like, like it's almost in many cases, like they don't want to be bothered with it maybe. I don't know. Right. But also too, it comes back to that old adage. It's not a problem until it affects you. So yeah. when you see, with like, um, like one thing that I saw with the um, with the thing going on up in Michigan, they they held a big old huge boycott and they put pressure on a bunch of companies, which yeah. forced those companies across the board to come out and be like, "Hey, we support you know home grow, where we support the medical patient, we support the caregiver program," because Michigan is pretty organized and they will put pressure like. Uh, during the during the MCMA the 5300 bill, they were 
filling up voicemails. They were um, basically crashing the dot gov, the Michigan dot gov site. Uh, there was like they they were making sure they put on this boycott. They had all these lists of these companies. They had uh, all these brands on there. Those brands were having to do double time on their PR, being like, "No, we support caregivers. We support this. We support that." But if you that pressure wasn't there, they wouldn't be talking that way. They wouldn't they wouldn't be saying that. They wouldn't be putting that you know putting that out there because in reality is like anybody that owns a cannabis license in any level, you're bad position to be against a caregiver. Uh, medical patient, a home grower, and that it's just bad position all around. Because uh, one, they, they they're part of the reason why you're able to have that license, right? Um, to, to, to you know to do that. Now, to the respect to the license holders, yes, you had to take your crazy uh, financial risk and there was a lot of that other stuff in order to do that, right? But when you turn your back on a whole group of people. That help you to get to where you're going that's going to leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth and that's going to you know reverberate in in this community is a large community but it's small enough where stuff travels really fast and really quick and and we've seen that uh just in the past couple of months where there's something pop off and it's on everybody's feed you know right and and you know that's where i think that uh if people uh and then and you know people start kind of changing on changing and looking or like a broader view of stuff i think that there's a space for everybody to do something right so whether that's a retail that's a grower there's the the relationship between them to a caregiver to a patient to where if you like especially um the program where say the commercial side or whatever doesn't want to grow a low yielding strain that is going to help with nausea or epilepsy or whatever then that caregiver could provide that for them right or they have the ability to grow it themselves uh the home grower can keep working and and, and going through those steps so i where I, everything could all actually work and have a space but what you have is you got this weird divide where retail thinks that's going to take away from their sales and and the grower thinks that the the, the caregiver and that is going to take away from their sales but it has absolutely no effect on them there's even some studies out there that it has no bearing no effect on it and also to um if that was the case then it's like that's a you know that's to say like um you're always going to have you're always going to have a black market you're always going to have a gray market you're always going to have all that no matter no matter what in any sort of industry you know right i'm pretty sure that there's there's black market airline parts that are traded you know like the, the, the perspective so right but um well my ultimate point is 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 i think if you if you deal with this plant in any sort of capacity uh be open-minded across the board and and look out for each other because uh this this group in this community is unlike any other community out there and it's so diversified we don't have religious disputes we don't have racial disputes we don't have all the stuff that we're told and trained to be having we don't have that in this in this community you know especially you see it you know you go tapping in i tap in be on a live if i'm on a live here at midnight that means that it's uh it's 11 a.m in iran and these these guys will jump on there They'll be walking through their fields, you know, through the Middle East. And then once you get done with those folks, right, then the, then the South Africa folks are starting to pop in and showing off their plants, right? And then, you know, next thing you know, later on, it's like one, two in the morning, the people from Thailand and, and, and Australia are tapping in, right? You know, we're not we're not talking about anything but this but this plant. So that's what I'm saying is like when you when you really look at it in, in a full circle. And all of everything that encompasses it encompasses the people, it encompasses the world, it encompasses passions, and you know, name a, name another situation that does that. I mean, right? You know, yeah. And even you know, it doesn't have the stigma to it. Doesn't have the problem. Like for instance, when it when we have cannabis events, right? We don't have riots. We don't have fights. <laughs> we don't have you know anything like that. Like um, there was one where the um, I can't remember what event it was, but they were like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll have a beer garden or whatever the hell. And it's like. It's a cannabis event. You don't need yeah. you don't need a beer garden there. That's like that's where you run into problems, right? You know, uh, uh, get get rid of that. You don't you don't need it. And so they uh, they listened and their event went great. They're, you know, it's like basically the security was just a you know they were just filling up space. You know, right? <laughs> but but yeah, that's where uh, 
but I, that's where I that's where I really find and, and hold a lot of hope for for this and this movement and what people are going to do and what they're going to be able to do. And the cool part is, is I get to watch and continue to watch history unfold and uh, and see it. And and uh, also too, it'll be nice because ain't, ain't nobody going to ask Chad where in the hell he was when was, all this shit was going down. And I don't think anybody's going to ask me the same as it goes down. And the cool part is 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 um, you know we get to reflect on this and in, in a decade from now and 20 years from now and 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 be like oh I wish I knew you know what I know now I knew then you know right well we're gonna know 10 years oh, yes. 10 years right you know we'd be like oh man if we knew that oh man yeah. we did that you know always give me give me that time machine but you know, you know the great thing about it too is you're a huge part of it. And that not just only by, you know, the actions that you take and the information that you spread, the awareness and the community that you build, but your catalog in-house genetics is deep. There are so many options out there for people to try in-house genetics that it's always mind blowing to me. You, you mentioned South Africa, you mentioned Australia, plants that you have selected yourself, seeds that you have probably shucked or at least bagged. Well, are out it's, there in the world. That's an amazing feeling. You are it's, part of it. A big part. There's a lot. There's a lot to it, and I think it's kind of like uh, the best way to describe it is like an iceberg, right? You know, and then there's so much stuff going on at, all at once that it's really hard, and sometimes to, to keep up with. And it, and it, you know, it, it, it get pretty, pretty damn tired. But like I know from the discussions, the, the daily discussions that I have with my partner to, to you know, like oh. What, you know, this is what's going on, or this is what the, we're going to try. The, you know, like there's a ton of stuff going on, but over the years, to your point is, is yes, there's a vast catalog. There's a lot of joy. There's a lot of happy, but there's never ever going to be lost on. And I can speak with my partner on this too. There's never lost on when we get those DMs, when we get those pictures, we see those tags. It is, it's, it's exciting to see because they're they're they took the time to take a picture and put it on on their social media, which more than likely will get them taken off because, you know, Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg <laughs> takes this plant, right? Yeah. Just to tag so they could share it with the world, right? So, the, you know, there's there's a lot that, that you know, a lot of times people think it's superficial, but it, it, it a lot of this, all this stuff runs, one runs really, really deep, you know? And it's cool because the way that it, you know, like, especially with my partner and the, the, the finger on the pulse that, that he also has and the, and all the work that goes into this is, is it's a, it's a, there's a lot of heart and a lot of passion. There's a lot of things that, that, uh, that make this thing, that make this thing go around. And, and, uh, is it worth it? hundred percent. Is it, is it, uh, does it have its shitty days? Yes. But also too, you got to remind yourself, you know, I've had way worse jobs and way worse, way worse jobs doing, you know, like been working in construction for a number, you know, basically my whole life, you know, right. That's hard, strenuous work. But if you're working with this plant, you're like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a bad day a little bit, but give it a few minutes, uh, I'll be, I'll be happy again. You know. Let Let me uh, sample some mm -hmm. of my product that I can actually see, touch, and feel. Yeah. That up, and that'll solve the day. And you know, even if you are well, having a bad day, somebody out there is having a good day with. In we've Australia. had some. We've had some. Some some bad days. Like, um, was it? I think like four years ago. Four years ago, we had one of our rooms basically get up to 147 degrees because of the, uh, I think it was five years ago. Anyhow, we posted about it. Shit happens. Um, it, uh, yeah, the, the, it said 142 or 147. It was, it was the, never seen the, the, the thermostat say that much. But anyway, what had it happened was the, we had a, a quick power outage and then, uh, the lights, everything came back on, and the uh, the um, AC went to default mode and didn't come on because it was like a power surge or something like that. And they we had a uh, backed up exhaust, right, which was supposed to hit at anything above 105. It was supposed to hit on and suck all the air out. That didn't work. Basically, everything that could have failed failed. And uh, the way it was explained, when that door opened. It was the it was like basically just the amount of heat. It was like opening the the door to hell. So when you go in there and then you start inventory and seeing what was actually in that room, and you're just like, oh, man, it 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 hurt. But also too, we posted about it, and um, doesn't matter how well you are prepared, and 
and how many cool gadgets you have in place, you're going to run into problems. And uh, that's exactly exactly what happened. And But I could tell you, we were pretty beat up about that, and it was hard to post, but we just knew, yeah, we got to post this and, and show people the other side of this because they're far from perfect, no matter what precautions you take. Because there's, there's fail-safes that should have taken place. Like, for instance, right. the lights should have dimmed down and eventually went off because there's a sensor, right? All this stuff just basically just, it was just like, like it was meant to be like, yeah, you know, it, it, it's tough. I still, still now that I think about it, it still hurts a little bit because there's a couple of plans. Too soon. Would love to have back, right? Too but, soon. Uh, but, yeah. but it's, you know, a learning experience. Now uh, we have a, we have a, a backup on a backup on a backup. I can tell you redundancy that. Redundancy <laughs> is good, but a lot of people don't even maybe think of redundancy, particularly even on a home level where, you know, the investment might not be as big, but interpret that differently. A person needs their medicine and their entire harvest just got fried. That's a really big deal. That's the same as losing like a million dollar room. So mm -hmm. redundancy is yeah. good. Your, your mistakes or well, not even mistakes, your, your crap luck can lead to benefits for other people. So I'm glad you shared it. That's why we shared it. Goes it. To show the, like, it goes to show those like with it, with everything uh, that, you know, in-house prides itself on and in everything that's, that it does is like, uh, like just as much as, as it, you know, in-house takes credit. We always have to really focus and show people like, there's a two way street there because uh, the people that also took these beans and turned it to magic and you know, all that there's, so there's, there's this nice, good two way symbiotic relationship between, between the two. And that's where I think uh, without that, and you know, without that, it would, you know, I don't think they would have gotten nearly as the traction or the success, you know, cause that's where, you know, people, people kind of cut themselves short because the, cause like you go to a show and there's been a time where they're like, Oh, once I got the in-house gear, it was this, it was that. And it's like, you got to remind them like, yeah, but you, you came up with the other half of that. Right. You know, so make sure, make sure you're giving yourself that the same amount of praise and credit as yeah. well, because, because it's just important, important to do that. You know? So it's like, it's like, okay, we gave you, we gave you everything to make the best cake you could ever make. Now you got to go, you know, mix it and build it and, and you know, and cook it. Right. And that's, a, and that's so that's like, like that, that true relationship uh, that's there, you know, and we've been, Really fortunate because uh, another thing too is, is we don't really get in the fray of all the all the crazy shit that's that's out there, you know. And also too, we're private people. We um, you know like to just work and do uh, do what we do and and let the world decide whether whether it's any good or not, you know. And that's where I think that some of the, some folks you see that you know they'll have an ego or they'll have you know whatever, and it's like I don't think that really has too much too much space in this, in this community, you know, because I think the vast majority of the people that I've met and that I really seshed with and got down with is, is, you know, some of the, you know, top notch people that, you know, they're just, they're just happy to be here. They're happy to be, happy to be living in, in a world where you no longer have to worry about the cops in many, in many States. And it's like, you don't have to worry about the cops kicking down the door, taking you to jail because you have a because you have some weed in your pocket you know that used to be a reality not too long ago for a lot of us yeah some of us some still which blows my mind thank to be in washington um yeah yeah that's uh some people work hard on selling themselves if you have a good enough product with time it, it will speak for itself and then you're just there to support it you're there to work hard to maintain that. Some of the best, you know, the breeders, they always say some of the best breeders you never hear from because they're busy, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the truth. Uh, you got to watch out for the people who spend more time selling themselves than they are in the garden. One thing we were running into was um, people were taking staking claim on the in-house. And then there was like this, uh, a lot of stuff building up. They thought we were out of Holland. They thought we were out of California. They thought we were, you know, <laughs> all these, all these places. And then we started to see another thing coming up where there was, you know, a shift against like, you know, the home growers and the caregivers and the medical aspect and all that stuff. And we really feel like we're really connected to that, especially, you know. And so when we were just kind of chalking it up and with this platform and building it, it was like, oh. You know, we'll start giving we'll start giving these folks a voice and 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 all that and 
And then at the first, we were getting quite a bit of heat from it because they were like, you know, oh, politics doesn't involve in cannabis and this and that. And it's like, well, it touches on politics, but it's also touches on, you know, we can make this whatever we want to make it as long as we, you know, work in unison and push it, push it that, that forward. And then, you know, but you'll take the heat. I mean, you'll take the criticism, but uh, if you know that you're right, then time will tell. And that's what's happening now is the stuff that we were saying, you know, uh, three, four years ago is already came true or already we're off on to, on to new stuff, you know, right. Or, or bigger and better things, you know, and the, especially like the monopolies, that's, that's what scares me the most is, is the, the amount of monopolies and, and all that, because that's how the corporations work in the United States. That's why we only have, two cable providers that's why we only have a couple of uh yeah. of uh you know internet providers and and yeah. phone providers and you know if, uh you know they just yeah you know, it, all of a sudden it's kind of becoming really really vanilla around around here you know and if you don't like it where are you gonna go right dish tv you don't like comcast where are you gonna go dish you know right you don't like dish you can go back to comcast and go back and forth you know that is a literal conundrum I struggle with. That is the only option I have out here. I freaking hate them. Their service sucks. Only game in town. Got to have them. But, you know, I'd love to ask you a question, though. Like, yeah. what, uh, I mean, you get to see the same stuff that I see. And you get to, and obviously, um, you're genuine and passionate about about these about these things when it comes to people, when it comes to home growth and all that. In an ideal world, an ideal world. I mean, what would you see would be a good good balance for for that? Where you think the where the vast majority of people would really get behind and, and accept? Right? So, a better question is: is if you were to take five important things that would be across the board, what would those five things be? One, I would I would love to allow people to grow it themselves. Um, not everybody's going to take advantage of that. Some people are going to try it and then they'll fail. But I want to see that option, which also encourages like an educational aspect or an arm, a, a resource, a good resource center. Almost I took sustainable agricultural classes at Skagit Valley. Um, I would love to see maybe a cannabis specific or something that can translate into home and veggie gardens because so much of it is uh, applicable to the other so okay i want to see everybody with the right to grow i want to have like tier one i would love okay vertical integration is important uh washington doesn't have that because i want to be able to grow it package it and sell it myself chain of command mm -hmm. is so important there's a lot that can happen in between so vertical integration is important and this is something that we tried in Washington, but allow tier one smaller footprints to do like a farm to table, to have a direct mm -hmm. place to sell, because there is no way you're going to be able to compete on scale. There's no way you're going to be able to compete on price. It is the quality of your product that will sell it. And unfortunately, in the recreational stores, we're not there yet and what i a lot of the stuff i would consider good or be happy to grow myself it's way more expensive than a black market price would be so until that comes down i don't think as many people are going to appreciate that tier one hands-on in the room every night touching each plant quality that it can bring so tier one have that access direct to consumer um I wish they would. Well, to your point, though, real quick, is it'd be cool to see something. And I'll use you as an experience, as an example, right? So you have a tier one that, that caps you at two thousand square feet, right? And tier two is ten thousand, and tier three is thirty thousand for the people that don't know. So it's a square footage that you can grow. But I think to your point, though, so hey, Chad up there in Westport, he's got a couple of he's harvesting two or three strains. He's got X amount. He's gonna. He's got. He's holding the. He's holding. He's holding court there at his place, right? Uh, so seven o'clock on Friday, we need to go by there and hear what he's got to say because he's going to explain, you know, what this and that, right? And then after that, then you you should be able to have where somebody can come in and pick a you know a couple of jars off and all that because you can't. You're not going to be able to service all the stores that are going to want that, or you have the capacity to do that. So that's where I think that 
uh, the tier one, tier one being able to treat that like a farmer's market or treat that like a, at that point is a really great point. And that, and here in Washington in particular, that should be emphasized and really screamed to the top of the lungs because that type of situation, because if Chad has a grow, if Chad Westport has a grow, he's going to educate everybody that walks in that door. This is what, this is what I was going after. This is what I was leaning towards. This is what I was hearing. This is why I think I nailed it. You guys, you guys be the judge of it. And then, you know, all that. And I think that's, if you had that, we would have a way better system here in Washington. If there, if something like that, that resembles that. So I love that. I love that idea. And that, and that just kind of ties back into, you know, the craft beer we, you, we were talking about earlier. We're in the Pacific Northwest where craft beer really launched. So it is a model that we've seen go from that corner little pub guy brewing his stuff to a national model where now a lot of those early craft brews are bought up by Molson's or Miller or whoever at this point. Um, but it also gave those people generational wealth sometimes, I guess you could say. That's not necessarily my goal, although I would never turn it down. Well, well, they, I would. Well, they did. So with the, with, the, with the craft thing, what ended up happening was is the bigger guys realized they couldn't really compete with the craft growers. So what they had to do is they had to come in and absorb them or buy them yeah. and then either shelve them or run and operate under that brand because it took away from – they couldn't – they had to – because they couldn't do it themselves. They had to go buy somebody that could do that, right? That's just the that, – that's what it's more like. Like as an example – Elysian used to be an independent brewery. Mbev came in and bought them, changed everything up. But that, but yeah, but the thing is, is with that is like when you think about with the beer industry, they can't patent an IPA. They can't patent. So you can have different flavors, and just because they bought that one doesn't mean that another one's going to spring up or somebody in their in their garage right now has the next best thing, big thing when it comes to when it comes to craft beer. That should be the same. On the flip side with cannabis right the guy that's you know been been working on all sorts of different crosses he's not a breeder he's just trying to find different traits and different expressions that he's really loving and enjoying or her should i say too you know and, and so they're gonna they're gonna introduce that to the world or then to their friends or whatever and people are gonna find joy they're gonna find happiness to it and then that gets shared with somebody else and that gets passed along with somebody that of uh, that you know that has like a platform or has the, you know, can get a real good word out there, grabs it and says, you guys, I look at this. I haven't, I haven't seen this in a long time. And that's how, that's how things shift and move. Cause then a lot of some, it's a good combination of, you know, what you know and who you know in order to get to where you're going. But that, but you know, extremely to your point though, is, this, is that, yeah, they're, they're always going to, they're always going to capitalists are going to capitalize. Right. You know, but it doesn't change the fact that, there's still room and still for everybody to be in there. It does.